ಬೇಸಿಕಲಿ ತುಂಬ ವ್ಯತ್ಯಾಸ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಒಂದು ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಇದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಓಕೆ ಸಿ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ವೈಲ್ಡ್ ಲೈಫ್ ನೋ ದ ಎಡಿಟರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ವಾಟ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರ್ ವೈಸ್ then it's advantage now it's entirely an different uh, entities yeah. different uh, when yeah. when you are talking of a sequence you need to know how it works i was working with one of the editor in my younger days and uh, there was something uh, some yeah a tiger was walking or something like that and i asked him to put the call which i had recorded somewhere else in he thought it is a tiger call but uh, this is just one minute example i am giving but it was actually a langur call and then uh, he said no 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 tiger is not calling at all you are going to a close up shot and how are you putting this in there then i realized that he is thinking that the call i am putting is a tiger call it was actually not a tiger call it was another monkey's call which is calling because the animal walking there like that when i this is one minutest thing like if you have to tell all this to an editor then it our life will be Visible. very very difficult so if the editor has an idea of what he is doing like in a wildlife documentary ambient sound becomes extremely important and they are all recorded differently and we use it appropriately and not just uh, bird calls the bird calls will be indicating certain things and it will be conveyed to only certain audience it's a subtlety which will not reach many audience but we work on every bit of it separately like every ambient sound we use will have a meaning in it it will be indicating the season or the time of the day or that particular uh habited if it is the moist deciduous or a deciduous or evergreen forest or if you are walking if you, something is going on i is it very if if it is going to a stream and the next shot will be putting certain shot which are related only to the stream not just the sound of the water it's certain bird which will be calling at certain time of the day sitting only in the rivers very fresh very clean uh, rivers of the forest they you will not see them in uh, the drier deciduous forests or the open uh, streams or in the ponds so it will all be leading it will all be working on your mind it is an audio visual you need to understand every bit of it will be work so if i have to if i have to if the editor is contradicting with me on all these things like uh, hey why are you putting some monkey call when the tiger is walking and thing like that not it'll be terrible so when you develop a sequence so you need to have some experience of the sequence the cameraman has to be real experience to see it and develop it like sometime just 50 second sequence it will be and it will be lifetime uh, it'll have taken you a lifetime you'll be seeing it for the first time if you're really good then you can almost push it to 55 seconds and the editor will push it up to 1 minute 20 seconds It's because this, that sequence is so precious it will have taken 20 years for you to get a glimpse of it once in your life and that is where an amateur cameraman can mess up the whole thing like so that is why when you are learning on the job it will be extremely difficult to teach another guy and will not have any other guys when we are working most of the time we are working alone so it's a different matter yeah, so that's why in uk you, you have uh, specialized editors wildlife uh, nab and uh, any other documentary whatever, fiction whatever no? specialized even within documentary if it is about history anthropology archaeology specialized people will be there who will be very good at certain things they will be brought in and tak 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 if even if it is i met ga- met a guy who specialized in uh, documentary editing especially in on pets he was such a master he was just all over the world ha- happily is flying around just as a editing consultant about this pet films about this pets and things like that he would just go there at the end 
say why it is not working why it is working tak 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 it's not working it's like a magician uh, mm. man he is highly paid dad i was surprised to see such a strange profession for traveling show you you find them i mean the different editors so very That's very, very interesting, interesting. Strange, it'll, be, it'll be fun Uh, well, no, and uh, at the same time, situation one one animal, for example, there there is a language in in the forest, a continuous communication go going on. We don't call it call it language because only Canada is a language to us. Only English is language to us. Whatever human being speaks is a language to us. But actually, in the forest, there will be huge amount of samvahana kriya. Continuously, I mean, the communication will be continuously going on. So everybody will know what is happening in the other side of the forest, things like that. So every call will vary. So, for example, uh, so many animals will give alarm calls when the tiger is coming. So same uh, like one langur will give. <coughs> when they give that call, you know it's a subadult langur giving a call for a tiger at a distance of this and this, looking at this. And if the wind is towards you, then <coughs> that call will enhance, and you'll see that you'll hear it properly. You'll exactly know it looking at looking towards us. So the tiger must be somewhere in between us. And and if the call is coming, cut, 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 cut faster and the more panicky, it's a leopard. And if the call duration is long, there's so many subtleties. You know, you can exactly tell whether the tiger is coming, leopard is, or the wild dog is coming. So it's a different world altogether. So you need to. Bring that ambience and atmosphere to the audiovisual, and somehow convey it to the audience, carry it to the audience. So, uh, so you need to know all this natural history phenomena to put it across. So you are not faking, you are not cheating. It's about exactly how this is how it happens, but how how you fill uh, the ambience. You will not be able to do everything together. You will have heard it many times. So you exactly in different situations, somebody will be. I will be targeting certain times of the film. After some time, I'll be telling uh, the other boys, and uh, maybe Kripa will be taking them around and doing certain things. Exactly, this is what I want. The, the, I want a bonnet macaque, yeah, extreme screaming. They'll be just go looking at it. They'll go by to where a lot of bonnet macaques because bonnet only bonnets give extreme uh, screaming. This thing for wild dogs, and no other animal will give a lot of call and wait because. They can't afford to wait because if they're giving a lot of call and waiting, they'll go and catch them. So it's a <laughs> so different. They all di behave differently to different animals. So the editor should have an at least idea and passion towards it to begin with. Okay. Otherwise, it's not possible. To yeah, can't the decorative or sound? Huh? Yeah, yeah, sound or the ambience is not decorative. In should even make sense. in documents, that should be how it is. It's part it's of the commentary or yeah. part of the language. Part of the, the part of the part of the seriously expression. Seriously, you should treat ambience very, very seriously. You somehow, you know, when somebody is running, you know how how it sounds. You will not have the recording, so you just put music. Da, 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 da. Avoid music as much as possible. Only when it is absolutely necessary. Everybody will teach you to just put some music and leave it. But try and do it sincerely. You try and do the. Fully, yes. You can do it alone. You can record it on your own and do it. Just match the sounds and see how it works. It will work much better. Yeah, sir. So, since our school days, we have been told that uh, native knowledge sources and native cultural practices play an important role in the process of conservation. But you were talking about how the villagers and the localites started poisoning the wild dogs in the like it became a culture for them. How do you look at this conflict? Do you see it as a conflict? Conflict, Nijahu. Natural, you can sit. <laughs> see, it's called native wisdom. But to find a small chip of native wisdom, you should have the knowledge and ability to dig into a big hill. Because every native wisdom is 
is lost, submerged, subdued in huge myths and uh, uh, beliefs. rituals and beliefs. beliefs and so whatever wisdom is there, it will be so small. So you need to have scientific knowledge to dig into that and find exact wisdom. So now, when you're young, you're told you look at it in black and white. Now, with as you're an adult, you will see that there is a lot of shades between black and white. So, tribal knowledge is not not the best or not the worst. Correct. So they are neither uh, uh, the most wise people nor the most uh, dumb people. They are not black and white. They are human society. They belong to human society. They belong to humankind. So, so they are... The come on, it is all black and white. What you are saying yeah. is black and white. That is what I am talking about. You have to see the grey parts. This is not a black and white. Life is not black and white, sir. You need to be very, very cr critical about these things. So they have a lot of knowledge. But see, just I will give you one example. I don't know how much you can understand. They eat some plant when something goes wrong. But that plant will have a lot of chemicals and maybe one of the chemical might affect to give the result. And that chemical part might be slightly higher. But they will give you all sorts of bullshit and uh, stories around it. And the pundits will take it with that. That is why we will not be able to believe it. Nobody takes it to the lab extract and why it is working and why it is not working. And they will suddenly one day tell you that even uh, if the snake bites and if you are dead, you can be brought back in that. Then you will, uh, what is this nonsense is this? So, it will all be covered with myths and see, they are all living alone in the forest, un, unexposed to the outer world. The outer world people are seeing them like uh, they are fantastically knowledgeable and they are completely dumb. Neither, they are perfect human beings and they have a certain amount of knowledge which is completely hidden in myths, myths and covered in uh, beliefs. So you need to have some knowledge to dig into it and extract it. It's not about just throwing them up. And, so villages are different, tribals are different. What I was talking is uh, villagers. Tribals usually don't poison. They usually avoid poisoning. It's, it's all about the food. And their knowledge will also be around the food. It's difficult for your age to understand what I'm talking. But I can talk to you about just the knowledge and the food. Any animal for that, human being for that, their tribal knowledge will also be around the food. Food and survival, those are the basic. Even if we go down to our own basics, it's all about food and survival. So, for survival you need certain things. Then you spread the gene, then the food. All these things take that basic thing. Over, and over hundreds of thousands of years surviving in the forest, they will have accumulated some knowledge.